Hello everybody and welcome to D&D with High School Students Season 5. It is finally time. Thank you guys for your patience for waiting for like a year and a half, two years. I don't know however long it's been since COVID ruined everything. But we are back in the studio in person. So I'm going to actually go around the table and introduce our players. Now, before I do that, I'm just going to tell you guys the setup for this uh, season is a little bit different because these players aren't noobs. They've been playing D&D three months, maybe, before COVID kicked in. We started up a D&D club with a handful of people, and that started growing. And every week it would get bigger. And, and right before COVID killed and everything, we, we had like 25 people, and it was growing. It was going to be awesome. And then COVID came, and that probably could have killed the club. But you know what? It didn't because... Uh, the students were smart. They started up a Discord, they started organizing games online, and at one point they had like nine or ten different campaigns going on, which is unbelievable, right? So despite COVID, they kept persevering. And, and then, um, then we started to come back to school, and the club's even blown up even more than that, because now we have like 40 or 50 people every week, so it's craziness. But um, so that's a little background on what's been going on without this show, but now we're back. So I want to introduce um, the players, and then we'll go around and introduce the characters. So on my right is Kat. Say hi, Kat. Hey. Kat, tell us a little bit about your character. Who are you playing in Season 5? I am playing Lark, an Archfey Warlock. Um, she is a human, and yeah. Cool. We'll find out a little more about your character as we go on. All right, across the table from Kat is Ellen. Hello. Um, so Ellen, tell us a little bit about your character. Um, I am playing a satyr clerk by the name of Winfred or Winnie Birch. Winnie Birch. All right. And then in the corner, all the way off in the corner is Josh. Josh, Hello. tell us about your character. Who are you playing? I'm playing Occam, the totem barbarian. Hmm. And what race is Occam? He's a Leonin. Leonin, a lion man. All right, cool. So you guys have these characters. You have made these characters. And we collectively decided that you are not going to be level one noobs. So we're starting off at level five? Yes. yes. Yep. OK, good. I just wanted to make sure I remembered that. All right, so where are we playing? Well, we are playing on the continent of Kaminos. Now, I sent each one of you guys a little bit of a background about the continent. Um, and for those of you who are fans of the channel, you guys might know this setting from a previous campaign, Storied Sojourns. Kaminos is, it's an island continent, so it's surrounded by water. And it's far away, as far as you know, it's far away from any other continents. Uh, the people, the different kinds of, of peoples of Kaminos, including the different monsters and species of humanoid races and anthropomorphic races, um, they all seem to have converged in this place. It's a very strange blend of peoples. Um, you guys are actually from the, the southern side of the island. And the southern side of the island has a chain of mountains and a huge freshwater lake. Um, now, some of you guys know that it is possible to travel by sea, but that there are great dangers. And because of that, most ships do not travel much further than a mile off of the shore of the coast. And that's only for like fishing and, you know, trade and stuff. But even that can be perilous. Like there are many stories of like fishing ships just going missing, right? And like debris floating up and nobody really knows what happened. So um, the land is a wild and dangerous land. This continent does not have that many settlements. This continent does not have many cities or even villages because it is um, populated in large part by creatures and monsters that are fierce, dangerous, the stuff of legend and myth even. Um, you guys actually are not from the major city, but you are in the south of the region. And the largest city uh, that's that's kind of in the region where you are is Ohiro. And Ohiro is, is, to you guys, it's a metropolis, right? It's this huge, old, walled city with multiple layers of defense, right? Um, and you know this place because maybe you have been there, okay? You have gone to the city for trade or whatever. But each one of you guys in your background, and I, I didn't coach you on any of this, 
but each one of you guys kind of chose backgrounds that were a little bit less inclined to be maybe from a city. Am I right? I yeah. So. Let's let's revisit your character now. Tell me a little more about your character, not just their name and race and class, but tell me a little bit more about them. And I'll go back to you, Kat. So start us off. Um, Lark is, I'd say, five foot ten. She has um, relatively pale skin, white and gray and brown sort of streaked hair, uh, mostly wet towards the tips. Um, she is a charlton. She wears uh, a short, like, half cloak, or no, she wears a, wears a full gray cloak with a hood that she has kind of hooded down um, and sort of button up, doublet underneath. Um, one of her eyes is uh, a pale yellow, and the other one is a dark reddish pink that appears sort of almost unnatural. Um, Lark has been on the road for a while. Uh, she is used to traveling in the forests um, and is kind of wary of other people. Um, but she, regardless, she's very sociable, um, knows her way around people. Uh, despite not really enjoying their presence. Let me ask a follow-up question. How, talk to me about the, the warlock and the patron, but don't reveal everything, just right. what you want to reveal, but like, how did that come about? Is that something you could share with the rest of the group and with the audience yet, or is that something you want to reveal in-game? Um, probably most of reveal in-game. I can say that um, her eye, the red one, is sort of a symbol of her patron, mm -hmm. and she kind of doesn't really like to, to talk about it much. Okay, but, yeah. cool. All right, so that's a good intro because we're going to need to know how you guys all met up. We've established that you're going to know each other, but you guys are going to kind of come up with that plan, so that'll be interesting to see. All right, Ellen, talk a little bit um, about your character, a, l a little bit more about her. Um, well, I'd say Winnie is a, I'd say she's probably about 4'8 at the most. She's a very, <laughs> don't look at me like that, Josh. <laughs> she's a very tiny little lass. Um, she wears a very kind of mismatched outfit that she's kind of made herself. Um, she has a jacket that has like, kind of like a checkerboard on one side with like yellow and red, and the other side's like a nobleman's jacket that she like cut in half. Okay. Um, she has like almost a witch hat on, and there's kind of a ring of flowers around like the top of it. Some of them are poisonous, <laughs> uh, you know. Um, she's kind of grown, grown up in the woods her whole life. Um, not alone for all of it, but alone for more recent years. Um, and there are things that follow her sometimes. But um, you know, she's not too worried about it. Talk a little bit about the cleric and the, the deities, like what you're comfortable with in terms of, of how she, she obtains her divine blessings and her powers. She's not too sure. Okay. Uh, she does, she, does she have any formal training in, no. in a clerical sense? Or is this just kind of a, a, some mysterious divine connection or connection to the divine? Probably the second one in some okay. ways. She's not quite sure what happened, but fell asleep, woke up, you know, there's magic now. Uh, she's fine with it. And know? that, by the way, is totally totally makes sense because weird things like that happen all the time on Camino. So it's like there there are unexplained things, many mysteries uh, that take place on this continent. Um, all right, Josh. So tell us a little more about your guy. Uh, Occam is a, he's pushing eight feet. Uh, he's just there. Uh, he's a very large lean, and he wears simple clothing, and it looks to be handmade. Uh, and even for a lean, and he has this kind of extra bit of fluff around him, particularly around his mane. Uh, you, there's little, uh, little highlights of this light brown hair that you'll see. Um, he is generally just a very large person. You can just see him. He will tower over most people. Maybe not other Leonins, but he is exceptionally tall and uh, brawly. Um, Personality-wise, uh, he believes the simplest things will succeed hmm. the easiest. Simplicity is best in his case. Okay. And talk to me a little bit about his totem and that background part. Um, his totem is something that he's kind of forged himself. It's something that he's worked for. He's 
spent a lot of time in the woods, alone hunting for, you know, food to eat, and occasionally he'll go into town and sell pelts and whatnot. Um, his totem is a representation of his resilience. Uh, he is bear totem. Uh, kind of this mark of how he has survived uh, the wilds and how he has survived his past. Okay. Side note, does anyone think it's funny that a lion man has a bear totem? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Quite. Me. Um, so each one of you guys have chosen to make a loner. So now I'm going to sit back and marvel at your creativity <laughs> as you collectively brainstorm live how your characters met each other. Ready, set, go. Have fun. I don't doubt that we just ran into each other I at some point in the woods. We just walked into a clearing, looked at each other, and said, oh, yeah, yeah. all right, you're yeah. here now. Possibly, yeah. um, Maybe got attacked by something or someone we worked together yeah. to, you know, not die. Yeah. Something that neither of us could overcome alone. I think I'd rob you. I don't have anything. I think I would find out that you don't have anything. Yeah. <laughs> While robbing me? Yeah. yeah. In, in the act. I don't doubt that that would happen, yes. I do have a house. I feel like it might happen just outside of mine. <laughs> Let me ask a question. Because it's dangerous for people to travel on this island, whether that's by land or by sea, and it's dangerous to live out in the wilds, which is why a lot of you guys are loners kind of surviving off on your own, and you made it to fifth level, so you must be somewhat decent at surviving. What are the odds that you guys would have at some point made a trip into the city? Oh, I'd say Very decently high. high. Uh, just like character, but I forgot to mention. Winnie's kind of like a, a tinker. Like the way she, like she'll make little objects and little knickknacks and she'll go and she'll trade them in town. So she goes there rather often. Okay. So if, if that's the case, I'm going to say Ohiro is um, for, for Caminos, it is considered a very large city, right? Now, in standard D&D &D terms, it's, it's not. It has a population of 4,000 people. That's it, which would be like slightly more than a village and slightly less than a town in a normal D&D &D setting. But, Size LT. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. In, in Caminos, <laughs> this is like a metropolis, right? And it's a, you know, it's a big city with a harbor and, and you know fishing boats and stuff and it's a walled city um, so what you guys might have learned about this city having gone there and maybe not being from there but having gone there um, one of the reasons why it is has survived for as long as it has whereas other cities have been literally obliterated to ruin by mythical monsters or wars or whatever this city is built into the mountain so it there's you know the mountain range descends and, and it goes to a, a bit of flat land and then out to the sea, to this rocky shore, but there's a harbor. Uh, the, the majority of Ohiro is built into the mountains, right? So it goes up on levels. There's like, it's like a stepped city almost, you know, and there's multiple layers of walls. Something that you would probably also be aware of is that there's a strong military force which defends the city and the people. Um, and this this military force are called the Stratos, and they are mostly led by and composed of Leonin. Uh, these are Leon, the, like some of the finest warriors, fighters, paladins, uh, you know, rogues, specialists, that kind of stuff, who form the Stratos. They are they're a benevolent military group. They're not a dictatorship. They are there to truly protect against the numerous onslaughts uh, season after season of whatever nefarious monsters, creatures, mythological beasts happen to come upon the city and attack it, right? Um, but to that end, they have kept the peace in that region for a long time. Um, they're kind of both the city defense and the city law enforcement. Um, within the city is mostly trade and, and residences and administrative buildings and that kind of stuff, right? Um, outside of the city, there are farms, there are mining operations in the mountains, there are coastal uh, fisheries, and those places have to be protected, and there are you know patrols that go out and protect them. But uh, at least once a season, there are attempts to make trade with other settlements. Uh, one of the neighboring and by neighboring, I mean it's still like two days travel. Uh, one of the neighboring 
settlements is uh, a place that is northeast of Ohiro, around the lip of the mountains, called Narostema. Narostema is a city built next to and integrated with the sea. Its streets aren't made of, of stone, its streets are canals. So it's, it's a city on the sea and of the sea. Ohiro is a melting pot though, which is why all of you are welcome there. Uh, there you have, throughout Ohiro, you have Centaur, uh, Firbolgs, Kamina, the, the humans of the continent, Leonin, um, lizard folk, Loxodons, Minotaurs, Satyrs, uh, Tabahi, Tortles, and even some Tritons. Uh, Nero Stema, however, is, they, they accept everybody, but they are ruled by Tritons, the Tritons of Nero Stema. Are, are kind of like the Leonin Stratos of Ohiro. They're the ones who protect their city. So occasionally, the trade guilds from Ohiro will hire brave adventurers to accompany wagons, um, ships sometimes, to neighboring settlements for trade. And then likewise to return with the trade goods from the neighboring settlements. This is no easy task. This is not just like hop on a wagon and ride along for most, you know, for, for nothing. There are almost always um, some attacks on these, these things, whether those are from, you know, mad beasts or, you know, creatures, monsters, whatever it might be, or even just roving bands of raiders who are just trying to survive by like taking from others, right? So there, there are oftentimes these these things where they make trade runs and it's about a 50-50 chance of survival. Like the trade run might not come back at all. Or it might get to its location, but the return trip is raided or destroyed or whatever. So you guys are familiar with all of these things. These are, these are like employment opportunities, but there are so much more. And, and in the city, there's always someone looking for something or someone looking for someone to do something. I would like to start with you guys having a day in the city. How's that sound? Right. Maybe it's Sounds been a good. while. Maybe it's been like a month, you know? Um, and you guys have set this regular time when you all meet up from your different kind of little quiet solitude lives and your safe spaces that you've managed to carve out in this rather unsafe and inhospitable continent. Um, and maybe you're going into the city because you need supplies, or maybe you're going into the city because you want to build things and trade things, or find employment, or seek adventure. So, you approach this ancient city, possibly the oldest one on the continent, but you don't really know because, because people don't travel this dangerous continent that much, you aren't even sure what's around the rest of this continent. Those with a taste for adventure, though, might want to seek those things out, might want to find out more. <clears throat> so um, you guys know that the, the kind of epicenter um, that sits atop the hill on the east end of the town of Ohiro is Castle Ohiro. And this is kind of the military you know, base of operations, right? This is where the Stratos have their, their, their barracks and, and the forges that you know, make the weapons and armor for them, that kind of stuff. There is a amphitheater with a fighting pit and a stage. There's lots of entertainment because the people, you know, they need entertainment to keep their spirits up. Um, there are plenty of taverns, plenty of trading marketplaces. Um, there's a specific area, a kind of central market plaza in town where they just have rows and rows of, of stands and carts and, and tents and stuff like this massive bazaar uh, that they call the den. And there are, there are brick and mortar shops and inns and taverns and market stalls and tents and people who just come in with wagons of stuff to sell and then leave. So that's also kind of a place to connect. So what would you like to do? I'm drawn to the den. Okay. As well. Yeah. All right. That's the place to go to, to buy things for sure, mm -hmm. to peruse things um, or even to sell things, you know. So. So you guys get into the city. Uh, it is a bustling hot day. The weather, the climate on this continent is, is what I would call a very Mediterranean uh, climate. It's, it is sunny and bright a lot of the day. Uh, because Ohiro is like 
at the base of the mountains next to a harbor, it gets a nice breeze that kind of blows through the city and blows out the the stinkiness of the city, and which you guys like are not accustomed to because all of you tend to kind of live out in the, the wilds on your own and lots of fresh air. Um, but there's also, you know, just, it's, it's a busy place, right? There's sounds echoing throughout the, the market, people negotiating and haggling, people, you know, yelling out their goods and their wares, the sounds of like, things being made, ching, 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 you know, tools being used, things being forged, so food, like just stalls of food, just like street vendors with food, people selling things. So you guys are walking through. Mm -hmm. Make Thanks. a perception check. Oh. Hmm. I mean, 18. 16. <sighs> Nine. Okay. You you are so you're so like unaccustomed. Sometimes you forget like just how loud and overwhelming. Like it's like sensory overload, right? Like I am smells. I'm blind in one eye. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there's like music. There's you know people haggling and talking and yelling and laughing and stuff. And there's inns and stuff. And and so you're you're like in sensory overload and you're just like wow this is crazy right. You got an 18, what'd you get, Kat? Um, I got as a 17 plus to 19. Okay, so those of you who got above a 15, you see a small um, boy with kind of orange, very tan skin. He would look like a Kamina boy, like a human boy, except he seems to be emanating some smoke and his hair doesn't seem to be hair, it seems to be almost like f burning embers. And you see him kind of standing in an alleyway, um, kind of watching what's going around, like what's going on. Nobody seems to notice him, but he sees you, and you see kind of a look in his eyes, like as if he's seen the three of you and you've seen him, and now he knows that you've seen him. Quick question. Yes. Uh, we're kind of in this big bustling marketplace. Do I see anywhere that uh, might be kind of like a place where uh, livestock would, you know, get water? Like a, just a big tin of water somewhere? Yes. There are multiple horse troughs with water. Absolutely. That's there are also several fountains throughout the plaza. Okay. What's the smallest one near me? Um, yeah, there's a, there's a small one maybe like 30 feet away from you at the back of like a, a cluster of tents. I'm gonna make note of that, and I'm going to try to ap approach the child. Okay. <laughs> you guys, uh, what, what are you doing? I'm just watching, I think. Yeah. I'd like to see where this goes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You approach aggressively, passively, like- I'm not your... breaking eye contact, just straight on <laughs> moving directly okay. at the child. He's looking at you, he doesn't back away, Make an insight check. Approach the child. Ooh, uh, insight is going to be a 30-20. That's enough. You see that he's not afraid of you, but you could tell that he, he kind of has a little bit of worry, uh, maybe some anxiety kind of okay. in his expression and in his body language. Like he's, he's not backing away from you like he's gonna run for it, but he, he, you know, his eyes are kind of darting all around looking, but then he makes eye contact with you. Um, another question, would I know what a genasi is? Ah, there we go. <laughs> um, they are not, I'm gonna say this, they are not common in this area. Okay. So I will let you make an arcana roll as- Can I make a roll for that? Yes, if, if you guys, I mean, you see this, you, you, oh, come on. you see your friend walking to, <laughs> towards this odd child. Four, six. You're, but you're like, I've never seen a, a human like that <laughs> before. What strange features? Nineteen. Okay, you're like, that's a fire genasi. Like no. you know, right? You know <laughs> that this is a child who is a fire genasi. Um, you know that this is a thing that can happen. That there are humanoids who are imbued with a respective element, and you've heard that these these humanoids take on physical traits sometimes of these elements, right? So the, the, the fire genasi, it clicks with you and you're like, oh, 
and, and you're certain that that's what this kid is. As you get about 10 feet away, the boy looks at you and, and he starts speaking at you. Um, what languages do you speak? Common, Leonin, and Sylvan. Common, Leonin, and Sylvan. What? He says, uh, uh, he, he points, you see he points behind, and he points towards the north end of the city, which, which literally goes into the mountains, and he points like, keeps pointing up to like the peaks above the city. And he says, Ashteta Mususka. Huh? He says, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, what? Are, are you, do you want me to go there? He says, uh, oh, oh. And he starts pantomiming for you, and he's, he's flapping his arms. Oh, so. And he says, Zabai. Am I and he there? He points to his hair. You all right? So you guys are still like thirty feet away. <laughs> okay. You you see your Leona and friend like trying to have a conversation, and you see the boy begin kind of like pantomiming. Why is he harassing that oh, child? Oh dear lord! Is this the boy on fire? You see that the boy when he's pantomiming at one point, and he does the, the he does this with his arms, and he goes, oh. and he, you hear him say this right. But as he does it, there's, you feel heat as he blows out from his mouth, and there's like a little bit of a, a sulfur kind of burning smell too. And then he points back at the mountain, he says, Zmai. Is there snow on that mountaintop? Yes. It's a new friend you've made. You walk up? Uh, yes. Okay, you walk up. He sees you. <laughs> Actually, this is this oh, could be interesting. What's happening? Nope. He says, "Kamina, ikrosloto matagishka tasumos zmai." And he points to the top of the mountain. He says, "Zmai." <sighs> okay. Well, to my the best of my understanding. What he's trying to communicate is that there's a dragon at the top of the mountain. Where there's snow, there's a dragon? <laughs> Why would I know? I mean, you know a lot of things from what I know. Do I know what a dragon is? Oh, yeah. Okay, just making sure. Yeah. <laughs> now, I will say that um, in, in your... Anybody have proficiency in history? No. Uh, no. 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 Uh, how quickly... My summer children, you will learn the importance of knowledge skills. Um, do dragons exist? Yes. Do you know the specific history of the dragons in this region? Nope. But you can learn about it if you decide to. You know that there are places, places in the city of Ohiro where learned folk keep volumes of bound paper that has knowledge. But you. That's not necessarily your jam, but you know that it exists. Young man, why are you going on fire? Yeah, he's a fire person. Well, I can see that, but why? Yeah, he's fine. Do you want water? I'll tell you this no. Oh, it's my... My. I'm casting comprehend languages. <laughs> casting it or ritual I'm casting, casting it? it for I'm 10 so minutes. done with this kid. <laughs> okay. You you feel like if you just concentrate hard enough, the mm -hmm. gods will bless you with the knowledge to understand this boy. Mm -hmm. And within moments, all of a sudden, his words, he's like, it will fly down to the city from over the mountain in three days. Zmai is coming. The great red dragon, he comes. Well, hmm. from what I know, there's a dragon called 
Zmai. Zmai, I think, is going to come down and kill everyone in three days, or it's a kid being dumb. They do that a lot, so I don't know. He says, he, he says, you understanding my words? For like 10 minutes, yeah. He doesn't understand you back. <laughs> so, how, how do you convey this? I know. He says, ah. He says, you, you telling the, the Stratos, you tell the Stratos? And he points to your friend, who is a Leonin, yeah. but yeah. who is not a ranking <laughs> member of the Stratos. Yeah. He says, you telling Stratos warning? Uh-huh, yeah, definitely. Great mm -hmm. red dragon uh -huh. awakened from volcano by the lake, he coming. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. You telling Stratos this? Uh-huh, yeah. There's a dragon. It's gonna kill everybody. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're the guards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me? Yep. You've been promoted. Good job. Whoa! <laughs> oh no. Um so I'm I'm not a guard. I know. Should we take him to the to the I don't know. I, just, I mean But I could find one fast enough. I mean, you could, you're tall. I mean they're pretty big. They're easy to find. I'm gonna turn around. He's gonna cut both his hands around us. Hey, uh, Stratos, help! <laughs> um, you do that. Conveniently, there's there's a small trio of Stratos who are doing a patrol through the market. I have one with shadows. I think I duck into a bush or a tree or a store <laughs> nearby. There are no bushes or trees. Okay, this is an the city. alleyway. Yes. You find an alleyway and some crates to hide next to? Great. Sure. Um, so you are going to do that. You're waiting there to be the universal translator now? Yes. Okay, so you, you get the attention of a trio of Stratos who, who like march Leonin? over towards you. And all three of them are Leonin. All okay. three of them are wearing armor, the armor of the Stratos. Uh, and, and all three of them, you, they, they seem like soldiers, not captains. Um, they come over, they all have the shields and the spears that you were familiar with, and one of them says, what seems to be the problem, brother? Uh, this kid says there's a dragon coming. He looks at the kid. Zamai, I think it was. He says, uh, okay. he says, I do not speak th their tongue, but... Neither. But we, we know of one who can. Mm. Will he understand? Oh, I, I, I can understand him. It's fine. He mm. doesn't understand us. Hmm. Wait, right, wait, hold on. Kid, do you understand me? The, the kid is like, eh. Awesome. They don't understand us. He says, is he speaking to me? Uh, I do not understand tongue. My people live in the great mountain. Something about living in a mountain? I don't know, give me a second. I can, where the hell is it this It is language? the mountain of fire. That Ask him what language he speaks. I, I, okay, well here's the thing. He doesn't understand me, I can understand him. I think I might have something for this. One of the Stratos soldiers says, we can bring him to the castle. There is a commander there who, who is knowledgeable and if she cannot speak the, their tongue, then she has the magics to do so. He, he extends a hand and he says, and he points and he says, will you all come with him? Uh. The other soldier says, you all will come with to escort this boy. I'm hidden. One, so one. that this boy is not frightened. I'm gonna, uh, inspect my current great axe. Is it in fighting shape? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, all right. Then we shall go. And the, he, he beckons. And the boy says, Wh what are they wanting? Uh, where do they want to go? They want to tell warning of dragon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, uh, the, yeah. That's is someone who can speak my language? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, okay, we go. And, and then the, the boy nods and, and he points. And the, and the Stratos lead, they begin walking towards, you guys see that they're heading east towards the, the castle. Where? 
I'll what are trail you doing, behind. sneaky sneak? Trail behind 60 feet. Make a stealth check. Hey, hey, dirty Larko. Don't, don't you. Once you guys actually leave the alley with the boy, you notice that like people are actually like looking at him as you are passing by. No one approaches because you have the Stratos, like this phalanx of Stratos walking, kind of wedging through the crowd. People like move out of the way. Um, but they are looking and they're like, it's a, it's a, look, it's a Genasi. It's a fire Genasi. Oh, I've not seen one. I've heard of them. You know, and they're murmur, murmur, like, there seems to be a lot of excitement about seeing one of these. 13. You're moving through the crowd. You're now using the crowd as your means of kind of following and concealing. Um, a short time later, you arrive at the first of three gates of the castle. The exterior gate um, that you have no problem passing through as the Stratos lead the way. Um, you get to the second gate past a row of barracks and training yards to the middle yards uh, and you see a series of buildings and one of these buildings is like a two-story solid stone building and it looks very old and very well supported like these are not like small bricks these are big massive stones and it looks like they've taken some hits you know what i mean like there there are some stones that are cracked from obvious like damage not just weathering um, and some that have been replaced and the, the, the one Stratos that was kind of leading the patrol goes up and knocks on the door. And a few moments later, uh, the door opens. And you see standing in the doorway is a turtle. And the turtle looks at the Stratos and he says, yes, what is it? And the Stratos says, we found this boy. He is a fire genasi, but we do not understand his tongue, master. He is said to have a warning and he points and he says, this satyr can understand him, but does not speak their tongue. And, and you notice that like the turtle like does this slow look. He's like, ha. Interesting. Well, bring them in. And he kind of turns and slowly walks in. The Stratos gestures for you guys to go in. How tall is this doorway? To, what? How tall is the doorway? So this is... Um, am, I, am I crouching underneath the doorway? Yeah, a little bit, okay. like to dip in. It's a very solid wooden doorway with like metal banding. Mm -hmm. It might, you know, you, you feel like it's probably taken some damage as well. Um, there, there are not a lot of windows in this space, but when the doorways open, you see there is a bright light just an orb of light magically lighting up the main entrance. Um, the turtle walks slowly into this open foyer. I have a question. Yes. Um, if I'm assuming there's doors that they're entering, I'm still trying to trail behind yeah, the best you're, I can. You're, you're going to have to make a couple sneaky rolls. Um, I would like to try and just toss a dagger in between the doors to stop them before they fully close, if possible. I'll let you go ahead and pick how you'd like to do this. Mm -hmm. You can choose from stealth, deception, or performance. Because <clears throat> there's probably three ways that you could get yourself into a military base, right? <laughs> yes. Number one, you could, oh, you know what? I'll even throw acrobatics into the mix. Um, I'm going definitely deception. Okay. So you're going to actually engage with people. That's what, fine. What sort of lies are you going to spin to get you into where you want to go? Who am I speaking to? Well, there's uh, dozens of armed, armed and armored lion guards within the, the first yards. Mm -mm, uh, I'm with them. Oh, right. No role necessary. Okay. You, you move through. Um, now, when they get to the door, are you guys going in with the fire genasi boy and the one Stratos? So there's no windows in this place? Not that you see. Uh, do I, I will tell you this. That is not an odd thing. Because windows are easily breakable. And you know that there are monsters who attack cities and demolish them. So a lot of the buildings, especially within the castle complex, are just solid stone, right? Like, they're not made of wood, because that's flammable. 
Um, so it's not that uncommon in, in within fortresses to have like buildings that have no windows. Along with that, it's a dark room with like this orb of light in the air. Well, it's dark because there's no windows, but yeah. there's a floating orb that emanates light magically. Mm. It's like a soft, cool, you know, white light. Um, hmm. It's gonna walk in, but it's gonna make sure that the door is open. Okay. I'll At follow. least somewhat. Yeah, it's open. Um, so you, you see that there's like on the walls of, on the stone walls of this entrance foyer are these large, they're not like tapestries, but they are canvases that have been painted and the painting is exquisite and they seem to, each painting kind of seems to illustrate a major event, a major historical event. And I mean, they're, they're very large, they're like four by eight panels, right? Like taking up significant chunks of the walls. Uh, there's a door on either side, left and right, and then a door going forward. The turtle just walks forward. He doesn't like stop to give you a tour. He's just walking slowly. It's his movement speed. The one Stratos, I mean, he's going like, you know, 10 feet at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the one Stratos, who's escorting you guys and the boy in, seems to just be patient, like as if he knows that this is a regular occurrence. So you get to the door. The mm -hmm. other two Stratos are standing outside, but they don't know you. Now you need to deceive your way in. I'm with them. Hello. I'm just trying to walk in. I want to know I'm not wearing a hat. I do make the motion as if I am tipping a hat. Well, one of them was like, hello. And the other one's like, what? And he slaps the guy in the head, and he's like, well, hold on right there. Mm -hmm. Where do you think you're going? Mm -hmm. Inside. Who are you? Where did you come from? Mm -hmm. Who are you? Where did you come I'm from? I'm walking in. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. All right. Um, he tries to gently, but firmly, like, arm bar you from going in. I'm, so I'm sorry? You can, I'm trying you to can enter. avoid this, acrobatically speaking. <laughs> or athletically speaking, if you want to just break free of his attempt to pseudo grapple you. I will let him arm bar me, but not grab me. Okay. He, he says, uh, who are you? I do not recognize you. Why are you here? Uh, I'm Sullivan. I'm, you know me, I'm supposed to be here. He says, no, no. No, I don't know you. That's a nat 20, everyone. <laughs> he goes, no, I'm not dumb, and I don't know you. Now, if you're friends with those people who came in with the Earth, uh, the Fire Genasi boy, I will vouch, uh, I will ask them. And he says, you, friends is Seder, Hi. is yeah. this your friend? Oh, is it an acquaintance? Lark. I didn't know you went. Friends is a loose term. Mm. Well, it's a better term than losing your head on my spear, mm. so you can go in now. Really well. And you notice it, you, he, he turns and whispers something to the other Leonin. Do I hear? What do Leonin speak? Do they speak their own Leonin. language? They have their own language, yeah. He says it in Leonin. Do you speak it? I do not. Do Make I a perception this? check. Now, I'm going to tell you that you're like... All already entering the next room when they whisper this. I speak Leonin as well. You can make a perception check. We speak, the, we Not, speak the same language. Oh, wonderful. Uh, 23. No. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. You don't hear this. You're lagging behind. <laughs> and you've got comprehend languages on, but you hear like a whisper from the, the two stratos behind that say, I don't know if I should whisper it to you actually as a player because you know something that no one else knows. It would be kind of funny. Be pretty funny. I'm going to write it down. I'm going to write down what you hear them whisper. Ooh. Writing utensil, please. I knew this would come in handy. I knew that this language <laughs> in particular would come in handy in this town. So you hear one of the Le Leonins say that to the other. Mm, oh, Winifred, but I pull you aside for a minute. 
Hmm? Um, I'm, I'm trying to pull her like slightly, we're still walking, but kind of towards the back. Okay, so vis-a-vis -vis this happens, mm -hmm. right? Because like, you know, things go on, right? So the turtle walks into the next chamber with the other Stratos and the Fire Genasi boy, and presumably with your character, right? Yeah. Okay. And, and you kind of held back, she catches up, and now you guys are still in the foyer, so you're about 15 feet away from the rest of the group as they're going into the next big chamber. Yeah, well, um, I am somewhat skeptical of the motivations of this group, and so when I am trying to use a uh, false eye identity, um, if you do understand and hear me use a separate name. You are using a separate name? Oh, you are lying. <laughs> oh, I, oh, ah, you know. Winifred, not all people are good. Please keep that in mind oh, when you're traveling. I'm surprised you are well, alive. a lot of people, I just don't, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. the guards because mm -hmm. normally they get lied to a lot, so they're good right. at that time of day. Anyways, as, as you know. guys are having this little conversation, um, you notice that there is a magical orb of light that's lighting up this foyer and that there's much more light from this interior room. Mm. You cross the threshold of the door, you guys come a few feet later, and you see a massive rectangular room, like, like 60 foot by 100 foot. Like imagine the interior of a church, but minus windows. It still has columns to support the very large ceiling, right? So it's like a 25 foot tall ceiling. And around all of the interior walls are shelves, just 15 feet tall, occasional ladders, wooden ladders leaned up against them, shelves loaded with books and scrolls and tablets. It is, it is, a, it is a cornucopia of knowledge and lore. And that's just around the perimeter. The middle of this space has more of those, those canvases with paintings on them that are hung carefully but very balanced from all of these interior support columns. And you see that um, there's several, uh, I would say about five or six um, other people in this room who are kind of spread out throughout the room and sitting on the floor and they seem to be in some kind of meditative pose or deep trance. Like you see a, a, a couple satyrs, some kamina, um, you see one lizard folk, you see a tabahi, and, and you, you see these people are very simple clothing, kind of like the turtle, and they seem to be in kind of these meditative poses. And some of them have a canvas in front of them with some some paints, some inks, and some brushes. And then others don't have any sort of painting supplies in front of them, but they have like a wooden tray with just like different sand, like vials of different colored sand. And they've, they seem to be making like symbols and patterns in the sand. The old turtle continues to walk. And mind you, the size of this room. So it takes at least four more minutes just to cross this room. And he gets to the very end of the room and there's a simple desk with a simple chair and he goes up to this and he sits down and he gestures to a couple of chairs across the desk and he says, Fire Genasi, you, you speak or understand the tongue, but not speak it. What? I had a spell up. It's, it's kind of done now, but I... Oh, the gods granted you the wisdom and insight to discern the meaning of his speech. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah, oh. probably. Curious. What? Well, then let's get to the bottom of this. What omen did this young child share with you? What portent did he reveal? Uh, something about a dragon named Zamai. <clears throat> Zamai. Zamai. Uh, coming over from uh, somewhere. The mountain. I think. The volcano. The mountain. He takes like 30 seconds to stretch, and while stretching, he reaches over to his desk and grabs a large book. And then he sets a large book on his desk and he begins flipping through it very methodically. That would be a bad time to ask. I'm not entirely sure if my character's literate. 
that's a great choice that you're going to need to think about before the next session. All right. Because whether or not you're literate does have an impact in my game. I would say it's not always a negative impact, but you know, it's it certainly has a role playing impact. All right. So moments later, after some page flipping and reading, the old turtle begins muttering under his breath, and this takes another. 30 seconds and then he begins speaking and what it sounds like to you guys is common like he's just speaking the the, the tongue of Kamina and and he says tell me boy what warnings do you have for us and the boy because your spell still works right is it an hour how long does it last uh, I think it's just 10 minutes oh let me check. If it's only 10 minutes, then it wore off. But I'm if it's good. an hour, you still got it. I'm good. Long story short, he starts talking, and the boy seems to understand and responds. And within about five or six minutes, the turtle begins taking notes. And he grabs this quill and he dips it in some ink, and he begins writing down some notes on this parchment. And then after this discussion with the boy, during which the turtle. It is an hour. Okay, so you understand what's what's happening, so you can kind of, like, you, you can kind of translate what's happening because the boy seems to understand the turtle now, mm -hmm. and the turtle understands the boy, and you understand the boy. You guys still don't understand the boy, but you understand the turtle. It's a weird sort of magical mix-up that's going on. The turtle now has the ability to speak this language to the boy so that the boy can understand it. And after speaking to the boy, it is revealed that the boy comes from a people who live in a solitary volcanic peak in a mountain that had been dormant, dormant for centuries. Their people lived <coughs> within the warmth of this volcano, but that three nights ago, the volcano awoke, and with it awoke a red dragon who had slumbered beneath the mountain for as long as his people could remember. And this is not a wormling. This is not a young adult red dragon. This is an adult red dragon. And it has a name, and its name is Zmai. Any epithet? Like Zmai the X or? Yeah. Zmai. How do you spell that? Z M A A J. There's a J in there? Mm-hmm. All right. The boy's people do not wield control over this red dragon. But they will not be attacked by it. It will not attack the people who dwell around its own lair. However, it is quite possible that it could attack any of the neighboring settlements or any of the peoples who wander the plains to the north of the Great Lake. Now there are other settlements, as I've mentioned. Nero Stema uh, to the northeast, Agrok Timata to the northwest, and there are, like I said, nomadic tribes of different peoples who also wander that, that don't live in cities, okay? The boy's warning is, seems to be very serious, or at least the turtle is taking it very serious. He tells the Stratos to, to quickly bring him one of the couriers, and he's going to begin writing some dispatches that are going to need to be delivered to the other settlements. Um, he tells the boy that the boy is welcome to stay here, that he can be safe here, but the boy says, he politely refuses, and he says, I must return to my people, but we have given you warning that your people may prepare for a great thing is coming. And, and the, the fire genasi boy bows deeply to the turtle and bows deeply to, to you and to you. And, and then he looks at you. And he gives that curious look again. Like he, like he just 
doesn't know what to make of you and then he and then he begins walking out the door yep anyways um you guys want to go back to the market yes i would love that right yeah uh do you need us anymore mr zografos zografos yes uh you have been most kind and insightful to find this boy and bring him here. I will see to it that the Stratos delivers messages to as many as can be warned about this potential problem. You yourselves should pay homage to the gods and find safety wherever it is that you dwell. The flames of a adult red dragon wield terrible, terrible powers. And when is it waking up again? Three days? The child said three days. It shall ascend. This could simply be an estimate from his people's elders, but perhaps it could be sooner or later. Not to be taken lightly, nonetheless. The I'm turtle sure. says, yes, not to be taken lightly. He says, you have peculiar eyes. Forgive me for mm. this comment. Two strange potions as a child does that to you. <laughs> Go ahead and make that deception roll that you're going <laughs> to make. Boy, I hope you got a killer deception. I'm plus six, baby. I No. I forego <laughs> to mention a very important character detail. Winnie has massive scars over half of her face. Oh, that's important. I, I forgot 13. to mention this. A 13. And one of her um, horns Mark is broken. also has scars across her face. Yeah, well, like, well, like half of Winnie's face covered in scars and one of her horns is broken so that like we, something, something got. I'm, I'm really yeah. looking forward to revealing how all these nifty things happened in flashbacks. <laughs> um, so the turtle <laughs> just looks at you oddly when you say that and he says, oh, that is nice. Well, thank you again for your, your, sh your civility and your service to Ohiro. May the gods watch over you, and may Sinkaron not claim you. You are familiar with Sinkaron. Yeah. Sinkaron is the, the deity that represents death. Woo! And you, Woo! no one worships death, but they just hope that death doesn't come for them. So, the turtle. Uh, does like a gentle bow slash hand wave to acknowledge slash dismiss you. Um, as you guys are leaving the the academy, you see that there's th those same people that were like in meditative poses. They are now doing things, right? So like some of them are are painting these these scenes. Uh, the one person with this colored sand is like carefully pouring out some sand and like taking these little like wooden rakes and like raking it into these cool symbols on this big wooden, you know, uh, plate. Make a perception check as you are walking out. Oh. Mm -hmm. Nine. Eleven. Six. Okay. The eleven's enough. You, you guys, um, I don't know how you're going to exist with nines and sixes. The eleven's enough, though, because this is not something hidden, right? So, but as you're walking by, you, maybe you wouldn't have noticed, but like a little further off from where you guys are walking out, you see one of the people not calmly doing their art, but like furiously, like on their hands and knees, like with like d taking a huge brush and like whipping it around on this canvas on the floor. And they're kind of, you know, in their posture, sort of half covering what it is that they're painting so you could sort of see it it looks very vibrant but and you can also only see kind of like the person doing it from from the back you feel like if you walked over there though you'd have a much better look at what they're doing or don't i'm gonna lean into these two you reckon if they <clears throat> uh, kill the dragon they'll sell it to me at the bazaar <laughs> yeah. i would what? not doubt it now here's an idea now, if we kill the dragon, we can sell it to people at the bazaar. Will that be fun? Uh, 
Gonna check his great axe again. <laughs> uh, One of your expectations for your power are uh, oh, inspiring. I don't, any, I don't have any expectations. I really don't. You expect to kill a dragon? No. The bird's might. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna give a, just a, another glance at the artist. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they're, they're just like kind of are, are, I'll look over immediately at the same time. You, from where you are, you, you just see, like I said, like imagine somebody 20 feet away and you're kind of like looking over their shoulder, but they're they're on they're like on their hands and knees over the, the thing, like just dipping, like mat, almost not even like looking. Like they're literally not even looking. You should just you see their hand like whip out, dip the brush into paint and then go back over and they're just like it's like speed painting. Like there's almost like a uh, something eerie about the way in which they're doing it. Are we in this one? Do you walk over and look closer? I just like say that out loud. It's like the artist does not stop moving. Mm -hmm. I walk over. Give me a second. Uh, you see as you get closer that this uh, Kamina woman is like not just using a brush. Like her her hand has like paint on it. Her brush has paint on it, and she's just like, it's almost like she's just throwing the paint out and like swiping and spreading things out. And as you get closer, you guys see like her, her head whip around at one point. She, her eyes are milky white, like she's blind. And you, you, as she whips around and like grabs one more swath of paint, she like splashes it out. Finally, her body moves enough to reveal what this canvas shows. And, and the, the painting that you see is as if you were standing at the harbor looking at the city, the front of the city of Ohiro, with the mountains in the back. But in the sky, you see flame everywhere and this enormous red-winged beast soaring above the center of this painting, breathing flame down upon the city. That can't be lucky. Yeah, probably not. And that is where we'll end this first episode of <laughs> Season 5 of D&D <laughs> High School Students. We're back, everybody. Make sure that you like and subscribe. Thank you, and we'll see you for the next episode. Peace out. Bye. Yeah. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. Tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and watch other shows featuring Bill. He made me say that because he's a narcissist. Okay, bye.